talking about under God, we will support the right. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we exalt your name. We thank you, Lord, for this privilege to come together in your house. Lord, my desire is and always is to serve you and to honor you. Father, as we reflect together on your word, find pleasure, may you find pleasure in the reflections of our hearts together, Lord. Be glorified. I declare, Lord God, that you alone will be seen today. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. The one who made the heavens made my heart and soul. Before I drew a breath, I was loved and known. I am his creation, the maker's masterpiece and all that he designs will be done in me. I belong to the Lord, I am not my own. I belong to the Lord, I am not my own. I will honor him, for this I know. I belong to the Lord, I am not my own. Whatever we do for God should be done through the power of God. As Christians, we are not our own. We belong to Jesus. And so everything we do should reflect his character and his will. So we're talking about supporting the right. And support means to bear up, to hold up. And right is anything that is morally good, justified, acceptable. So under God, with God's covering, as his mouth his hands, feet, eyes, ears, as disciples of Jesus Christ, in this our Jamaica land we love, we will hold up that which is morally good, justified, and acceptable. Our lifestyle should pattern that of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The Bible is our daily guide, and the Holy Spirit accompanies and guides us as we live out our life of service for our Lord. For us to know what is right, therefore, we need to maintain a close relationship with Jesus Christ, spend time in his word, live a life. We live in a world where there are varying views about what is right, but we must keep our eyes on Jesus. The right that we support remains what is established by God. And if something is being labeled as right, and it does not align with the principles and teachings of Jesus Christ, if it is not supported by the word of God, then we cannot support it. How possible is it to support the right when as we look around us each day and observe the way things are done, it appears as if morality and doing what is right is not the order of the day. It is possible under God. It sometimes appears that in order to get ahead and to succeed, we must turn a blind eye to what is right and just. Let someone else deal with that. I want to focus on getting ahead. Why should I always be the one speaking up? Lord, you couldn't show it to someone else. Why me? Couldn't you send someone else, Lord? Don't you think sister or brother so-and-so would be a better fit? Why now? Now when everything is just falling into place. Why that? Lord, you know how sensitive these things can be. Why that person? Lord, do you know who that is? And we protest. And the questions come. And the battle rages. And we present all the arguments why we are not the best fit for this area of service to the Lord. Two lines in the song, farther along, says, While there are others living about us, never molested, though in the wrong. And then do we wonder why others prosper, living so wicked year after year. But we are comforted, cheer up. Farther along, we'll know all about it. Farther along, we'll understand why. Keep standing. Keep supporting the right. 
So as we protest, the Lord quietly waits for us to settle down to remind us that we are not our own. We belong to him. All that we do is in service unto God. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. Galatians 2 verse 20 declares, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. The life I now live in the body, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. When we said yes to Jesus, friends, he took us seriously and he took us unto himself. We are not our own. We belong to Jesus. The life we now live is through and by the Son of God. So we operate from a different platform from the world in which we live. And that is why this world is not our home. We are only passing through. But as we go, as we pass through, it must be felt that a Christian was here. A Christian is here. A Christian works in this company, in this office. A Christian goes to this school, is in this class. Jamaica must know beyond a shadow of a doubt that the church of Jesus Christ is alive and well. And there are Christians in this country who under God stand for the right, whatever the cost. So push me in the back office to work if you want to. Pass me over for the promotion. Laugh at me. Ridicule me. But that changes nothing. I will support the right. I will not bow to the pressure. I will not compromise my faith in God. If it is wrong, I will not support it. We will stand on the word of God and declare that no weapon formed against us will prosper. We are children of God, and he will defend us. We will support the right. And even if he doesn't deliver us, we are going to keep standing. Everywhere we go, we have an opportunity to shine our light for Jesus. We must leave an indelible and an unmistakable mark. After we go, our fragrance must remain. Not just linger, remain. Everywhere Jesus went, he left undeniable evidence that he was there. He did good, and so should we. We cannot, sisters and brothers, stand in the midst of wrong and immorality and our light does not shine and show it up for what it is. In the presence of a Christian, wrong must look like wrong. Not half truth or a mere irregularity or an unfortunate situation. If it is wrong, it must be called out for what it is wrong. Our light must shine wherever we go. When we enter dark situations, we must bring light. The light of God in us must expose dark situations and they should change for the better. If we enter a situation where wrong is the order of the day and evil is rampant and those around us know that we are Christians but are comfortable to continue their evil practices in our presence, that is a red flag. It is a serious and glaring sign that our light has gone out. We should immediately move to get back under God's covering and in right standing with God. When the Holy Spirit convicts us and shows us that we have gone off course, friends, let us not waste time trying to explain or justify what happened. I needed to keep my job. It was the, just the one time. I needed to pass the exam. It was my only option, the only way. 
if it is not God's way, then it is wrong. It is not the right way. And we must move quickly to get back in right standing with God. We are not our own. We belong to Jesus. We represent Jesus Christ everywhere we go. So if he cannot go with us, we cannot go either. Because nothing should be able to separate us from him. Now Jonah, we heard right earlier, found himself in a situation where God asked him to be obedient and to stand for what was right. God needed the Assyrians to see how evil they were. And he wanted Jonah to carry his message. Jonah protested, disobeyed God, and ran. You see, Jonah grew up hating the Assyrians and fearing their atrocities. So he would naturally have rather seen them devastated because they were a growing threat to Israel. Jonah put his patriotism to Israel ahead of his obedience to God. When God's word came to him in Jonah 1 verse 1, and the Greek for word here is dabar, which means to appoint or to command, to be spokesman. God wanted Jonah to be his spokesman. But he refused to go because he felt that the Assyrians should suffer whatever judgment God was planning for them. And so he ran in the opposite direction. He would not be the one to warn them. The deeds of the Assyrians are not recorded in the book of Jonah. They can be found in the book of Nahum. Nahum tells us that Nineveh, which is the capital of Assyria, was guilty of evil plots against God, exploitation of the helpless, cruelty in war, idolatry, prostitution, and witchcraft. And Jonah feared that his message, the message that he would carry under God's instruction, would be so compelling that the people of Nineveh would repent and God would have mercy on them. So he fled from the presence of God and went in the opposite direction towards Tarshish. Instead of going 550 miles to Nineveh, Jonah attempted to go 2,500 miles to Tarshish. We make things so much harder for ourselves when we don't support the right and disobey God. Jonah's protest must have included, Why me, Lord? Why those people? I am directly affected by these wicked people. And you want me to go and warn them? No way. At the end of the book of Jonah, when the Assyrians repented, putting even the animals on fasting, Jonah was angry at God. See, I knew it. I knew that he would have forgiven them. God had to show Jonah that he had sympathy, more sympathy for a tree than for 120,000 souls. As children of God, we don't get to pick and choose <coughs> which of God's instructions to obey. God is depending on us to stand up and support the right. God is depending on us to stand up and support the right all the time, even when we are the only ones standing. He's saying to us, you are not your own. You belong to me. I am with you. Keep standing. <clears throat> we have been sent. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm sorry. We have been sent to represent Jesus Christ in this world and to stand up and support that which is right. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. Don't be like Jonah and Ron. Where can we go 
to escape God's presence. If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there, your hand will guide me. Your hand will hold me fast. Psalm 139, 8 to 10. <clears throat> Jonah went literally in the opposite direction from where God sent him. And the moment he removed himself from God's covering, his downward spiral began. Remember, sisters and brothers, we are not our own. We belong to Jesus. And wherever he sends us, whatever he calls us to do, he equips us to do it. Wherever he sends us, he goes with us. If we disobey God's instructions and choose to go our own way, then there are consequences that we must face until we come back in alignment with the will of God for our lives. Our downward spiral will continue until we acknowledge that nothing that we do is by might or by power but by the Spirit of the Lord Almighty. We will have to stay in the belly of that fish. Whatever form it takes in our reality, in Jonah's reality, it was a fish, but whatever our fish will be, we will have to remain in the belly of that fish until God, until we cry out to God in surrender and obedience to support the right and, and obey God at all costs. Jonah thought that his opinion mattered more than God's plan and desire to extend grace and mercy to those who needed it most. He forgot that in the hands of the potter, the clay has no say. Jonah thought that there are some sins that are just too big and terrible for God to forgive. So when he was discovered sleeping on the ship, he knew right away what was happening. He had to face his actions and, and acknowledge his wrong. I know that it is my fault that this great storm has come upon you. <clears throat> Now, we see in the scripture two, other in, two instances where in the Bible persons sleep through storms. Who are these two persons? Jesus and Jonah. In Jesus' case, he brought calm to the storm. In Jonah's case, he brought the storm. Jonah realized that standing for the right, Jonah had to realize that standing for the right superseded his own agenda. He was not his own. He belonged to God. And God's plan had to be fulfilled at any cost. So sisters and brothers, as we are talking together about supporting the right, let us not make the same mistake that Jonah did. Let us remember that God's love is unconditional, limitless, and strong. There's no beginning or end to how much God loves each of us. As recipients of God's love, grace, mercy, and forgiveness, he is expecting us to extend this to others as well. He's expecting us to stand up and support the right wherever we go and wherever we are. Jonah's prayer from inside the fish in chapter 2 began with, In my distress I called to the Lord, and he answered me. From deep in the realm of the dead I called for help, and you listened to my cry. His prayer ended, but I, with shouts of grateful praise, will sacrifice to you what I have vowed. 
I will make good. I will say salvation comes from the Lord. Wherever God has placed us, it is not by chance. Wherever we work, wherever we live, it's not by chance. He trusts us to be his spokespersons and to represent him well and support the right. Let us be the solution to the problem, not the cause of it. When Jesus comes, the tempter's power is broken. As his disciples, when we enter situations of turmoil, peace must come. If we are in stormy situations, we must be the ones to bring calm and to restore peace. Let us be the solution that our country needs, our companies, our families, our neighborhood, our church. In the face of wrong, let us declare with one voice that under God, we will support the right. So as we support the right under God, don't be comfortable in the midst of wrong. Our light must shine. Be the solution to the problem, not the cause. Support the right, whatever the cost. And remember, we belong to Jesus. We are not our own. My body is a temple of the living God. I will worship in this house his blood has bought. As I bear his image, oh, may I not profane the holiness I hold in this earthly frame. I belong to the Lord. I am not my own. I belong to the Lord. I am not my own. I will honor him for this I know. I belong to the Lord. I am not my own. So courage, friends. Do not stumble, though your path be dark as night. There is a star to guide the humble. Trust in God and do the right. God bless you all. Amen.